Good afternoon. It is Wednesday. It's hump day, y'all. I was thinking about Dewey Rose. I'm wondering if anybody has heard lately if she had her her eighth near-death experience that she said she was she was due. And the more I, I thought about her saying that, I would I was like, what is her importance in saying that she has these near-death, so many near-death experiences because you might want to start seeing a doctor about something possibly being wrong or not going under anesthesia or I don't know. She has to do it because it makes the veil thinner every time. So it finally came to me. That's what she's doing. She's, she's like saying, see, so that's why I can see so much and know so much and what the hell ever. I, what blows my mind is it's just the Mormons, nobody else. So it's a Mormon thing. And if it's something that isn't in the Bible, but that your religion or your group or your cult has created, then of course there's gonna be a group of people that say they can do it. It's just like, let's just say my church said we could um, fly, okay? Well, I guess the Mormons also think that because um, transport. Lori and Chad and all of them can transport from one place to another. I'm like, why did y'all even fly to Hawaii then? Why didn't you just transport there and save money? Got this new girl I'm listening to about Mormonism. She's teaching me stuff I have not found before. When they get married and all the secrets and the temples and, ugh. I mean, this is an ex-woman now. She said that they can't, you know, nobody, not even your family, can tell you what you're going to have to do or all the things that happen in the secret rooms. Like the first room, you'll go in there and they make you take off all your clothes and you put on this paper garment that is very short and slit on the sides so that the lady or man can stick their hands in and, and feel all over um, and bless your stomach to have many kids and all that kind of stuff. But so she said she was just crying and humiliated. This old woman was just, you know, going over her body with her hand and hit her nipple and just what? What a violation. And why would you not prepare a child for that? She was just 23. You need to prepare your kids for shit like that. That's cultish, it's wrong all day long, and nobody says it needs to be done but them. It is wrong. You wanna pray over somebody, just do it. Just do it. She said then, she um, she said her whole life, she dreamt about wearing, you know, like we all do, buying this extravagant wedding dress and walking down the aisle, and everyone you know being there and seeing you and your husband at the end, you know, as little girls, this is something we play, okay? Um, I know I did. I'm not saying everybody else did. She said, then I go in there and I don't even get to wear my dress. I have to take my clothes off. Have somebody fill me up. Well, then she goes to another room and she has to swear to honor her husband for the rest of her life and all the other lives after and be sealed to him for eternity. And she cannot even talk to God. The husband talks to God. He asks God, he answers, and you obey. Are we living in the freaking 10th century again, or what? This is such, all of these are violations and all of these are bondage. And if you agree to do something like that, you're basically agreeing to not speak to God. Just not gonna do it. Why would anyone at a church want to discourage anyone from talking to God, especially as a husband and a wife. Now in the Bible, it does, says, does say to honor your husband. It was like the scripture of the three times you go to him, then you get someone at the church to go to him, and then the third time, if he doesn't listen, you can leave him, not kill him. But you're not supposed to not talk to God. Supposedly, they're saying you should just allow your husband to make the final say, and then you trust him, and then if it's wrong, it's, you know, that's between him and God. But I think the husband and the wife should pray together. Not that my husband and I do, my son and I do. I, I don't understand.
understand why anyone who supposedly loves God would, one, tell you, don't pray to him, don't talk to God. Only the husband gets to talk to God and you gotta obey. Then, number two, puts on a an apron of Satan in another room during that wedding ceremony. You put on an apron of Satan and that's supposed to be a good thing. See, they say Satan is their brother and that's one of the reasons What is the woman even, why do we, why would they have to even go to church if they can't talk to God? If it's just the men that are talking to God. I mean, what a horrible thing to promise, to swear in a holy place that you won't talk to God. I think that would make God angry that anybody would even be asking someone to swear not to talk to him. That's anti God. I mean, what do the women even go to church for? Just to shuffle the kids in and take care of them? The many, many kids you have to swear to have? I mean, we're not baby makers, y'all. It's okay if you decide you want to have a ton of kids, but you shouldn't feel like you have to or that you must to be a good little Christian or a good little wife. Now I understand why the men in the Mormon church are so cocky and think they're something and You swore to, and then you probably told your kids they had to. No, it's that's daddy. Daddy talks to God. Don't try to talk to God. What? What is all the many hours that we that they all spend reading that dang book and going to all these classes and ministry? And how can you even tell? Do they go and tell women? Don't pray to God when you get married. Can But you know what I mean? Like when they're on their little ministries and they're like, oh yeah, God, God, Jesus is wonderful. He's right here. You can talk to him. Someone, you know, believe they have a father God they can talk to and go to for comfort. And they tell you, no, not for women. It's for men. That's blasphemy. That's blasphemous. Maybe that's the word. I don't know. So I'm learning a lot from this girl. Anyway. 